And away we go. It's the DFS Early Bird right here from awesomeo.com. Dan Schaffer, Dave Lockgren, along with you on this Friday morning, getting you ready for a nine-game National Basketball Association slate. That's the NBA here on the Early Bird. Dave, how the hell are you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. James Harden with an outrageous game yesterday, dropping a 50-point triple-double. Not a 50-fantasy point triple-double, a 50-point Triple double, an amazing game from Harden. Just everything went right for him. He was fantastic. Lonzo Ball continues to be terrible, but that's really not a huge surprise to anyone who's watched Lonzo Ball play at all this season. And how's, Eric, Manny, how's Manny doing these days? <laughs> and uh, and 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 uh, of course Eric Gordon. So uh, yeah, Eric Gordon once again is the type of guy that you you know he is what we thought he is was was he is what we thought he was. So that uh that that about sums it up. But uh, we we still got it going here. I think I'm in pretty decent shape. We'll, we'll have to find out. But uh, still got this Phoenix Dallas game to go. The one that I said on the strategy show that Phoenix would win outright. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that plays out for me, Dan. Uh, has Ariza been traded yet? That Not hasn't yet. happened yet. Okay, all right. I, I keep waiting. I, I log in. I, I check lineups. I check you know situations and wait for him to be traded. He has not yet. Um, not yet. The Lakers is supposedly the landing spot eventually, but uh, I think that is a lot of uh, beat reporter romanticism that LeBron gets who he wants when he wants them. So, well, well and the, the Pistons want faults. Well, Pistons want faults, but also like had some sort of connection to Ariza and a KCP reunion. Like there was some weird. Yeah, I don't get it. They're, they're um, always targeting guys that just uh, Blake's working out you know, pretty well from, but they, they target a lot of guys that just don't, are not really good players. Yeah. Um, can't blame Stan anymore. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what that, that team's going to do. Uh, lots of, lots of intriguing moments because there are some good teams in the East that could make a run. Uh, the Raptors and Celtics have both been uh, solid franchises on the year. And then you have, the middling teams in the West who are either going to have to reload during the season to make a run this year or, or decide to sell off to try to make a run next year. So uh, things to keep an eye on as we go through uh, towards the trade deadline, still a, a month or so away. Uh, was it six weeks away, right? At this point, somewhere around there. Um, still plenty of time before these teams will start selling off assets. Uh, we're going to go position by position as we always do. I do want to remind you, uh, as you know, we are in the middle of the 24 days of give, giveaways here at Osmo.com. We are in week number two, which means that you get to choose, if you are chosen, uh, whatever sport you want, a free month, a free month pass at Osmo.com or a piece of merchandise from our store at shop.osmo.com. What we would like is over on YouTube that you have to subscribe. You have to like the video that accompanies this audio. So over on YouTube, the video, uh, and then leave a comment. Lafayette, any question for the people? Do you have anything top of mind that you'd like to hear uh, from, from the folks? I, I have one in the back pocket. It's not great, but we can go to it. I don't know if I want to, I don't know if we want to go to that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to ask them their favorite musical. I like their like it's sports related at least. Like, uh, how about this? How many point guards in this league are better than, than Lonzo Ball? Well, we'd get a lot of similar answers. Right. 30, 35, 40. Where, where uh, does Lonzo Ball rank amongst point guards? So, like, what number, if you're slotting top 10, top I like 20, that. Top I like that. Yeah, I like that. I want, I want serious answers, too. Like, be serious. Where do, you really, where do you think he ranks among point guards right now? And you can even hit me with a caveat, like, Right Raymond, now, Raymond right. Felton's still in the league, right? Right. Yes, he is. All right. I just right. want to get my right my... now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's still there. You know. So is uh Jose Calderon. Well, he he ranks and and obviously that's I I'm joking, but he you could be like he ranks here right now, but in three years Lonzo's going to be out of the league, or Lonzo's going to be you know could be could be could be top five. Terry Kill just took a pass off of the top of his helmet. Wow. Dropped it. Dropped it. But wow. So, yeah, I think that's a good question. All right. So we'll do you, that. Got, you can comment whatever you want too. like if, if as long as you comment you <coughs> and, and like the video, you're entered anyway, just so everyone's clear. 
Uh, that is true. So uh, do the same over on iTunes. Leave us a, a, a rating. We we prefer the five stars, but we want to earn it from you. So whatever you think this podcast is worth, leave that rating over on iTunes and then uh, leave a comment as well. Always love to hear your favorite moments, uh, whether from uh, Dave and my time together uh, between Fantasy Insiders and Fanvice and now here at Osmo.com uh, or uh, for what used to be known as the Night Shift and now known as the DFS Early Bird. Uh, all of those things uh, over there available on iTunes. So a rating, subscription, and a comment on iTunes as well. And you're entered to win uh, this free month at Osmo.com. On Christmas Eve, we will draw a winner for a year-long subscription. All expenses paid to Osmo.com uh, for uh, someone, for a lucky winner. Let's talk point cards first. Well, let's talk injuries first. Anything on the radar for you there, Dave? So we got nine games. We're always going to have a decent amount of injuries. And, uh, God, we've had a lot of them popping up lately, like a whole lot more than you would hope for recently. It, to me, it feel, I mentioned the other day, it feels like – it honestly feels like we're in March basketball. It really does. Uh, but that's not the case. We're not even in 2019 yet. So uh, I, I don't know what to say at this point. But, yeah, a couple question marks here. Kawhi Leonard uh, sat out both of those games on the back-to-back with that bruised right hip. That's actually the second time it's happened this year where you think it's a back-to-back sitting out on one of them, then he doesn't play both, then he's questionable the next game. So uh, he's still questionable here. Tyreek Hill, or uh, Tyreek Hill, this is how you know I've got the game on in the background. Kawhi Leonard uh, facing Portland in Portland as they continue this road trip. We'll have to see if he plays. Uh, Goran Dragic already been ruled out. Uh, let's see who else. Oh, Chandler Parsons is out. Did I, if I, <laughs> that's a surprise, right? Does anyone collect money like he does while doing absolutely nothing? I think the answer to that is no. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, Conley and Whiteside are both probable. Jamal Murray's probable. So those are all pretty big ones there. And then the, the big questionables that come into play, you've got Jimmy Butler, who's still questionable. Otto Porter, who's still questionable. Uh, Alan Kraft. It's actually something to, to keep an eye on. Brooklyn's playing pretty good basketball lately. They've got an outstanding matchup against Washington. If Crab is out, you're going to see some – we'll get into to where those minutes are going to be distributed. But that, that actually could make a pretty significant difference. Uh, Mike Muscala is also questionable for the Sixers. Who else? Damian Dotson, Jeremy Lin. Uh, Jalen Brown's questionable as well. And then in terms of guys being out, pretty much the same guys that have been out, like Trey Burke and, and Spellman. But I think for now, that's about it. All right. So let's dive in here to uh, position-by-position analysis. Don't forget, Dave has the deep dive every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Adam has it uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday over there at Osmo.com. Uh, and you can get it for free for one week if you decide not to try to enter the – well, enter it anyway – month is more than a week we can get a free week of osmo.com by using the promo code early bird uh one word over there on osmo.com get your free week of uh, all access uh to osmo.com let's talk point guard first yeah, yeah. russ westbrook at 10 8 so sub 11k here uh for russ uh, against denver steph curry gets sacramento and then john wall against the brooklyn nets kemba walker kyrie irving gets atlanta We've talked about uh, the lack thereof uh, when it comes to Trey Young defense. Get it that Kemp Bazemore is a slightly better defender and will usually take the best offensive player from the other team, but still uh, worth mentioning how bad Trey Young's been on the year. Damian Lillard, Oladipo, throw Ben Simmons into the mix for some MPE. Kyle Lowry finally awakening uh, from his uh, weeks-long slump for back-to-back really solid outings uh, against the Clippers and then uh, in the big win over uh, the Golden State Warriors, he had 12 assists, 23 points, three steals uh, in five rebounds. Uh, to add to that, 40, uh, I should say 54.75 DraftKings points. And then we get into the likes of uh, D'Angelo Russell, Bledsoe, McCollum, DeAndre Fox, plenty of names in the mid-tier that at least have some upside uh, worth mentioning. But, Dave, who are some of your favorites here? Who are the guys top of the heap, uh, top of the price point that uh, you think stand out a bit here for Friday slate? Tell you one thing, man. Uh, Russell Westbrook has has let me down recently. I uh, I actually had a pretty good night on Wednesday with Westbrook in my lineup, but it could have been so much better. Like things could have turned out so much differently. I'm not saying I would have banked anything, but uh, it certainly would have would been that much uh, better of a of a of a uh, a night because Russell Westbrook 
gives you 47 fantasy points, like 47 fantasy points, man. In, in what was a really, really, really appealing spot. You know, I, I understand that, that new Orleans at drew holiday played pretty decent defense, but they haven't been this year. Uh, drew holidays playing actually the worst defense, at least statistically of his career. And, uh, when I've watched him, I've seen him look a lot different than before. Uh, that game saw 232 total points. Yeah, it came under the under the to, the 235 total, but still 235 in regulation, man. Uh, 232 in regulation. That that sh- that should that should do a lot. And and honestly, had it not been for a decent uh, fourth quarter, it would have been even worse for Westbrook. So, look, I, I'm not backing off. I don't see any reason to back off. Westbrook is still uh, an elite player, as we all know. Now, Denver does play at a, a significantly slower pace than the Pelicans. So this matchup overall isn't really that great. But uh, I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not backing away from Westbrook here just because you know, he, he let me down, I think, in back-to-back games. I, have to, I think it was two straight games, right? Yeah, two straight games where Westbrook was, was really uh, very mediocre. I, he's he's still the top projected point guard here. There's really no question about that. Plus, you don't have guys like Hart. You don't have Harden on the slate. Uh, you don't really have any other super high priced guards. Like you've got Curry against uh, Sacramento, and on DraftKings, he's only six hundred dollars less than Westbrook. So, I still have Westbrook over him. And John Wall's price tag is coming up. We'll get to him. Hell, we can talk about him now. Uh, he has been awful this season. In, in, or or awful, awful for large parts of this season. And I'm not, just, I'm not talking about fantasy totals as much as just his overall play. You know, the team is five and a half points per 100 possessions worse defensively with him on the floor this year. That's not good. Uh, he has gone out and, and struggled a lot, seemed uninterested. Last game is, is easily the best we've seen from him this season. He played 41 minutes in a tough matchup against Boston. They lost by five, but... I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe this is is him turning the corner. I, I don't know. I really, like honestly, I, I don't know if it is. I hope it is, but I don't know. The problem is, Dan, his price tag went from eighty four hundred to ninety five hundred overnight. So you're not getting a discount on John Wall anymore, and and that right there is is exactly the problem. So uh, I, I like him in this spot. I like the matchup, but but I don't I don't see myself being able. What's to What's your favorite for him play here? here? Really like probably you know, point per dollar or whatever metric you want to use. What's the point guard that stands out? And what are some of the other names that you think you're going to be writing up for Friday's deep dive? I mean, right now, the value is is pretty scarce. De'Aaron Fox has seen his price point come down a little bit. I think he's a pretty interesting uh, play here against Golden State. Uh, he's just having, he's having a breakout season. I love what we're getting from this kid. Uh, and he's playing big minutes in every close game, so so that's another plus. Is it is it a relatively difficult matchup? Yeah, but at the same time, like Clay Thompson's going to be guarding uh, Buddy Heald. Uh, I think I think I think you'll see Stephen Curry on 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 De'Aaron Fox. Now, granted, it, the the Warriors play strong overall defense when they're healthy, but. I've said it a lot. You know, this is a team that lets inferior teams hang around. The Kings are at home. I think Darren Fox is a strong play here. And, and at that price point, he's someone that I'll probably jump on. Uh, in terms of the best point per dollar play, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. But I don't know if anyone jumps off the page as one anyway. Like, I think Mike Conley, uh, believe it or not, yes, this is a pretty significant pace-up spot against Miami. He's probable to play. But his price tag is still at a point where I have I have a – slightly difficult time getting on board there but also mind you he's 8100 like Kyle Lowry is 8200 on DraftKings and if Kawhi Leonard sits well you're pretty much gonna have quite a bit of Kyle Lowry Portland plays quality defense but you take the volume here you take the significant bump in pretty much every relevant metric and you run with it so I'd say if Kawhi Leonard is out Kyle Lowry's probably uh, my, my favorite play here, and I think he's still very reasonably priced. Uh, Portland's defense, while they started the season very hot, uh, they have really not been nearly as strong lately. Believe it or not, on the year now, uh, the the Portland Trailblazers rank 24th in defensive efficiency. If or I'm sorry, that's 24th in defensive efficiency uh, on the road. I had that filtered out. Let me let me look at where they rank overall because I was gonna that didn't seem right. 
Okay, but even on the year, Dan, they rank 18th. So they, they've really seen their defensive numbers come down. If I were to tell you that, that they ranked here after seeing what they did over the first month of the season, I think you'd be surprised. You know, this is a Portland team that over the first month of the season uh, was, was playing significantly better basketball. Uh, and, and now look what, look what we've got from them. They're a different team. I just, just want to see where they ranked defensively over the first. They ranked seventh. Over the first month of the season, they ranked seventh in defensive efficiency. Uh, over the last month, and then we can move on here, but kind of, kind of important to me. Over the, the last month of the season, what's yep. today, the 14th now? Uh, right, 14th. We'll, we'll use Thursday. We'll use Thursday. Uh, they, over the last month, they are 24th. Yeah, so they've seen a huge decline in defense, and this would be a great spot for Lowry if, if Kawhi doesn't play. In terms of value, you're going to be going back to guys like Kyle Anderson. You know, you're going to be looking at guys like him, uh, depending on, on, on what type of injuries we see. Is Trey Young someone I want to play against Boston? No, but he's cheap enough to consider him. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. And I, I will throw one more guy out there. that uh, uh, D'Angelo Russell. I was going to mention him at shooting guard, but let me just get that out of the way now. D. Russ uh, let a lot of people down against Philly. Uh, I get that. I know people liked him because he, he – put up big numbers against Philly in the past, but he's volatile because Atkinson's his coach as well, and that doesn't always help. But uh, with D. Russ against Washington, just a, a superior, a superb matchup. I really like him as well. But Dennis Schroeder, keep a close watch on this guy's salary. Schroeder was 5,300 last game out, put up 34 fantasy points. We'll take that all day. Uh, is it amazing? No, but we'll take it for sure. Uh, and now he's 5,600. Yes, Denver plays good defense, but he's going to be playing a lot of minutes uh, against their second unit, which isn't nearly as potent. And you look at his recent games, like he still has a 25% usage rate. Uh, he's still putting up 33, 35, 36, 40 fantasy point games with Westbrook and George Healthy. So 56 for Schroeder, who is still getting the minutes as well, 30 plus minutes. Makes in sense. And uh, somebody, somebody that, that gets uh, sort of lost in the limelight of the other star power there in Oklahoma City. Uh, so uh, as the price point falls and uh, the second unit unit or just when he's on the floor, the, the usage is there and the, and the potential upside is there. It makes sense to keep tabs on him uh, throughout uh, your lineup building. And remember, this is an early look. Things can change. You get the deep dive from uh, Dave, uh, also known as Lofty, uh, also known as Lofty underscore D, L-O-U-G-H-Y underscore D. Got to get that in early here uh, over there on Twitter. Uh, find them on Sirius oh, XM, that. Sirius that, 10 right. XM 87 uh, on the weekends. But uh, you know, you know who else? You know who else is uh, is very like very comparable to Schroeder in the sense that we we tend to forget him sometimes, even though he's been putting up big, big bigger numbers than most of the starting lineup. And he is a little bit more expensive than Schroeder, but he has a, a great matchup. Spencer yep. Dinwiddie. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie was the reason they beat the Sixers on Wednesday. He, he had 39 points, 51 fantasy points, 25 and 39 the day before. Like Dinwiddie's also playing 30-plus minutes a night. This team has beaten the Sixers, the Knicks, the Raptors, and the Thunder. Or I'm sorry, they lost to the Thunder by two points. But they, this team's winning like, against good teams. And Dinwiddie has a lot to do with it. So I'm not, I'm not counting him out either. I think this is a perfectly fine spot for Dinwiddie, and he's proven that he can pay that price tag off in a good matchup as well. So, yeah, him and Schroeder, interesting plays here on a slate right now. Spencer Dinwiddie least, just getting a, a contract whole, a extension of from the Brooklyn Nets, there. so you can take that one two ways from the narrative street. Either, hey, I got paid. I'm going to sure. you know ball out. I'm going to play my heart out because I'm now secure in my financial future. Or, hey, I just got paid. I don't need to worry anymore i don't need to do jack crap but yeah yeah he seems like the kind of guy that would just, I, he seems like uh, the kind of guy yeah, that just I, likes I, I have no i don't know i've always gotten that impression like uh, we're gonna see random narrative uh takes on uh right. friday from people who don't know any better better i, I mean i love you all of course uh, but stop with the the takes about money uh let's talk uh shooting guard next uh, we get uh, Curry and Oladipo. Depo came back for what about 28, 29 minutes, twenty nine minutes uh, in his first game back uh, with the knee issue. Said he felt fine, played a solid twenty nine. Uh, sort of stuffed the stat sheet in that short amount of time. Probably see thirty six to thirty eight from him on a, a, a healthy night. You get him here against Philadelphia. Bledsoe, uh, Russell, you've already talked about McCollum. 
Tim Hardaway Jr. available here at 6,600 against Charlotte. Dinwiddie again. And then you get the likes of Middleton, Clay Thompson. You get into the mix of uh, uh, Brogdon, Lamb, Schroeder eligible here uh, at shooting guard on DK. What names first sort of pass through here are going to be part of the, the player pool, part of the write-up, or at least part of the write-up research that you uh, go through on Friday? All right, yeah, let's do it. I mean, one big thing to to consider here is, you know, what's going on with Jimmy Butler, right? If we we want we want to pay close attention to that news, we weren't exactly sure what what Corkmus was going to see in terms of minutes. He played thirty five minutes in regulation in a close game, uh, took fourteen shots, and one thing I liked quite a bit. I'd mentioned that basically on the season. I, no, not basically on the season. I, I'm not going to give you stuff if it isn't statistically you know, proven. If, it, if it's not legit, I'm not just going to make stuff up and hope that it works out. Uh, Furkan Korkmaz, when you look at his shot selection, this dude uh, going into last, going into Wednesday's game was taking like 56% of his shots or 55% of his shots from three, right? Uh, it's 53 and a half percent now. But last game, and, and a, lot, a lot of my thing was, you know, I'm going to play him. I'm going to play him. I'm going to hope that Ben finds him on a bunch of open looks from beyond the arc and he hits him. Because that's pretty much how he's played all season. Once in a while, he'll drive to the rack. Uh, he's got a couple nifty moves around the rim, but, but they, they don't always convert. Well, in this game, Dan, he took 14 shots and only attempted three threes. That's something, well, most people would be like, well, we don't like, I don't like that inefficiency. No, that's good. That's good because he showed a surprising wide range of, of abilities in terms of shooting. And I like to see that because he, he showed that, okay, if he's not shooting threes, if he's not getting open three point looks, and and if if they're not if he's not hitting all of them, that he's still capable of of manufacturing points uh, in other ways, and I really liked to see that. So I went ahead and I looked at uh, his field goal attempts from this last game to see where they all were. Well, interestingly enough, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them were in the paint. Uh, two of them were from like you know mid range, mid range on the elbow. And then three of them were from, from beyond the arc, one corner and two above the break. So he took five shots at the rim. That's, that's good to see. Like, I like that, man. I really do. If you're going to get 35 minutes and you're going to shoot, you know, a bunch, most of your shots around the rim in the paint and still be able to hit a couple of threes, Corkmus is still very cheap. His price since last game came up to only $3,800. If Butler's out, I get that this matchup isn't as friendly as one with, with Brooklyn, even though I think they're a bit underrated from what we've seen recently defensively, uh, it's still a spot that, that you're going to go out there and play him for 35 minutes. So uh, you asked about point per dollar plays when we were a point guard. Well, here's one here that you're pretty much going to have to, to get a bunch of, right? You just, you just have to. And, and last game was very, was very encouraging. I can tell you that much. Anyway, uh, Stephen Curry, I didn't talk much about a point guard, but I do think he's a fine play here. You know, he should be, significantly lower owned on a night where you know Westbrook is still affordable uh I don't know where people are at on Giannis right now we'll get to him I'm curious to get your take as well uh Joel Embiid if if Butler's out has actually come up only a hundred dollars he had a monster monster game last time out 33 17 and 6 67 fantasy points so you have a lot of quality plays. I don't know how high Owen Curry is going to be but he is shooting guard eligible at a position that isn't that strong uh, and he is still very capable of giving you 60-plus fantasy points, uh, which he's actually done twice over his last four games. So, yeah, uh, Curry's definitely a guy that, that I still have quite a bit of interest in. And you know what, Then I think this game stays pretty close. I do, up until the fourth, and that's really all I care about. If the Warriors end up winning by 18, but going into the fourth quarter, it's like a five-point game, three-point, that's all that matters. You know, you guys are going to get your run, uh, and that's, that's what I care about, so... Uh, keep Curry on the table. Same with D'Angelo Russell. We talked about him. We talked about Spencer Dinwiddie, who, you know, continuously goes overlooked because people don't like playing bench players, even if they're getting 30 plus minutes a game and getting a lot of their minutes against the second unit defense, which is actually a huge positive. Um, you know, the guy that the guy that I've struggled with here is well, JJ Redick struggled a lot last game as a shooter, and he's gonna, that's going to happen. That's going to happen. But he played 37 minutes, still jacked up 15 shots and 17 threes. He's 5,100. I have no problem with Redick at this price point uh, in a game that I expect to stay very competitive. 
But Josh Richardson, uh, and he's small forward on FanDuel, but whatever. Uh, Josh Richardson has come down to $5,600, and he is not playing well lately, right? And they just got blown out. He only played 25 minutes. And this game's against Memphis, so it's difficult. But $5,600 with Goran sure. Dragic out, I feel like you have to at least yeah. consider him uh, because just, of how uh, a situation here become. where the minutes and usage will probably be up. I know we've seen a, a slight drop over the past two games, but hopefully that just means diminished ownership uh, for uh, Richardson here rather than an actual trend. I, I don't see how the, the Heat sustain any sort of offense uh, with him seeing a uh, decline in major minutes here if uh, – Dragic is out, so uh, Richardson makes a ton of sense at a price point that has less risk. Uh, 5,600 just makes it that much more of an upside uh, if things come together. Uh, ready to roll on to small forward? Yeah, just a couple of value plays. You know, Fred Van Vliet, I think, is viable if, if Leonard's out. Each of his last two games have been blowouts. He has one of them at the Oracle against Golden State, one of them at Staples Center against the Clippers. I mean, this team is really good right now, man. This is a really good team. Oh, and by the way, both of them without Kawhi Leonard. you got to be kidding me with how well they're playing right now. Fred Van Vliet was on pace to play 30-plus minutes in both of them, but he didn't really see any fourth quarter playing time, so you know that'll do it. And if Jalen Brown is out, let's not forget about Marcus Smart. I know people like to, um, to look at Terry Rozier in spots like this, but I will say what I've said a lot. Um, Terry Rozier in games where, uh, in games where, where Kyrie Irving is active, you know, even if he gets the minutes, the field goal attempts and assist opportunities are just going to be down uh, by a significant amount, right? Kyrie Irving shot 28 times in 40 minutes last game, had 38 points. Uh, that was that, that five-point win over Washington. Terry Rozier, Dan, played 35 minutes. So I'm not saying that, that Rozier isn't viable, uh, but what I am saying is if he's playing 35 minutes and, and, and Irving's playing 40, they're playing a lot of minutes alongside each other. And that means that Terry Rozier is going to do a lot more sitting around and that's why he had less than 20 fantasy points in 35 minutes. Meanwhile, Marcus Smart played 39 minutes, had 35 fantasy points. And the reason is he doesn't need to shoot a ton. He racks up a bunch of steals, can give you enough rebounds, peripherals, maybe a block or two in 10, 12, 13 points. He had 18 here to get the job done. He's still very reasonably priced. So if Jalen Brown does not play, uh, Marcus Smart, someone that I'm going to once again have quite a bit of interest in. And it's, it's, again, it's just very simple. He benefits more from Brown being out than Irving does because he doesn't rely on high shot volume. All right, let's and a lot uh, of touch on, you mentioned to, Giannis to before. He's here at 11K. KD is at 10-3. You do have Kawhi with the question uh, on the hip. Paul George, Ben Simmons. And then you drop pretty quickly from Ben Simmons down to uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. This is assuming Jimmy Butler is out. Uh, it is a, uh, I, last I saw, uh, a questionable tag, Butler dealing with the groin injury. No long-term or significant damage to that groin, uh, but uh, something worth monitoring. And then again, to like some Marcus Morris, Tatum, Bogdanovich, it, it drops off pretty quickly. And listen, uh, the likes of Middleton, Tatum, Bogdanovich have their upsides, but uh, not necessarily from a cash game perspective where you feel overly comfortable in the lineup you're constructing. You mentioned Giannis before and what I thought of him. Listen, he hasn't been great over the past, what, three or four games? Well, I think it's three games now. A sub Subpar outings in the past two. But we know that on any given slate, Giannis can put up 80 in a matchup here with Cleveland. I don't know that there's anyone defensively on this team that can stop him. If, unless I'm told an ankle or an elbow or a shoulder is hampering him, I have a tough time getting away from him if the salary works, like if, if the numbers work out. Um, how do you stand here at the top of small forward and who are some of the names uh, that you feel are at least in line for further research on Friday? So an interesting thing with Giannis is uh, – over his last 10 games, he has a 28% usage rate. You'd say, okay, well, that's not too bad, right? No, it's not. He's rebounding at a 20.6% clip, uh, assist rate 31%, 1.56 fantasy points per minute. But yeah, 26% usage rate. Uh, prior to that, on the season, the numbers were 
were remarkably different. And again, yeah, 28% usage. You're not going to cry about that when, it, when, there's, when you have somebody that's as good as Giannis is, as a scorer, as a, as a facilitator, a rebounder, a shot blocker, a, a, a ball swiper, you know, someone that does it all. But it is something to me that stands out when you are paying a premium for this guy, especially in a game that, that could evolve, devolve into a shootout pretty quickly. Yeah, prior to that on the year, now you got his last 10 games. Prior to that on the season, he had a 35% usage rate. That's a stark, stark contrast, right? You're talking about 7% usage differential uh, from his last 10 to his first, you know, to before that on the year. His rebounding is exactly the same as it was. His assist rate's actually up over his last few games or 10 games. Makes sense. You know, he, it seems like he's deferring more. Uh, and his per minute production is down from 1.65 to 1.56 over his last 10. It's, uh, do I think that'll remain there? Well, here's what I'm thinking. I don't think he's going to finish the year with a 35% usage rate. But I also think that you're going to see him take some more shots going forward. Now, what's interesting is I've been watching Giannis lately, and there's something that stands out to me is teams have actually – it's never going to be perfect, but teams have actually done a decent job of taking away the driving lane for him. And they're kind of forcing uh, his, the, t him to dish it to teammates. We saw the Warriors do that almost to perfection. Yeah, he shot eight for 13, 61%. The reason is, though, the, all those eight baskets were around the rim. It's not like Giannis isn't going to get to the rim throughout a game. But if you keep him from doing it at a high rate, you're very much going to limit his efficiency. And also, a few of those buckets came at the end of the game when they were down by 10-plus points. It's just something I've noticed. Uh, I still think he is one of, if not the most unstoppable player in the league. His lack of a three-point shot and a, you know, a mid-range shot doesn't help him. But it is, to me, a little bit concerning that the usage has come down that precipitously over the past 10 games, uh, over the past three weeks. Now, they're 10-point favorites. He, he's still Giannis and Didacupo. It's still Cleveland. And, yes, as you pointed out, there's nobody that can slow him down. His price has also come down on DraftKings to 11000 So, you know, of all of the, the negative I could say about Giannis, which is really just usage is down. He's, he has been a lot more uh, volatile lately. There's really no denying that, right? 35, he hasn't gone above 60 in, in four games. And I think, I, I, I think it was – actually, no, but prior to that, he went on that run. But before that, he was, he was a bit streaky. Uh, so will he bounce back? Absolutely. This could be the 70-plus fantasy point game. I'm certainly not concerned that he can't put those makes total up. sense in a uh, situation uh, that you're going to have all. to make some decisions on the higher end price tags and figure out exactly where you want to go. Where else do you see yourself leaning at small forward? All right. Yeah. Giannis, uh, 12,000 on Fandle, by the way, he's a thousand dollars more than Westbrook. So if I am playing him somewhere, it's DraftKings where he's 200 more than Westbrook, 400 more than Embiid, 700 more than, than, than Durant. The price tag on DraftKings is still very, very friendly for someone that has 80 fantasy point upside. Just so we're clear there, I don't want it to sound like I don't like Giannis. I just have, you know, a few reservations. That's all. If Butler's out, Ben Simmons is, is once again in play. You know, 8,700 on DraftKings is still very palatable. 95 on FanDuel. I don't love it, but only because the point guard position has plenty of other options that are similarly priced. I mean, John Wall, is uh is a hundred dollars cheaper than him? Curry's a hundred dollars cheaper than Simmons. Dude, Curry at ninety four on Fanduel is an outstanding play. Uh, and I didn't mention Kyrie Irving against Atlanta. The only reason I didn't is because I think that game. I, I think he plays probably twenty five minutes. That's one where I'm willing to say a blowout could really. I mean, we have nine games to choose from. A blowout could make this game uh, turn ugly real quick. So Irving in tournaments is interesting if Atlanta somehow stays competitive. But aside from that. Uh, it's a pretty sketchy scenario. But, yeah, Ben Simmons, uh, 87 on DraftKings is perfectly reasonable. Took 15 shots, shot 9 for 15. He's always a high-percentage shooter when he's getting the shots up. Uh, Triple-double threat whenever he touches the floor. He's going to rack up steals. Uh, and despite, you know, not, he not being you know, huge this year because his scoring – or he just doesn't shoot. He's still averaging almost 16 points, nine rebounds, eight assists, and one and a half steals in one block per game. Like his, his per game numbers are still really sick. So I like Simmons against Indiana again in a game I think stays very competitive. Uh, and then, Dan, one more guy at the top. 
And if you see any value here, feel free to, to throw it out there once I'm, I'm done with talking about Paul George. Paul George is, I, I've been very high on him recently, and he didn't let us down again last time out. Huge game, no, but you'll take 53 fantasy points. Absolutely. Uh, and he's playing 37 plus minutes in close games. You're talking about a guy that everyone likes to ignore because he plays alongside Westbrook. But his price has come up a little bit on FanDuel now, 96. He's still 91 on, on DraftKings, though. Now, he's not a priority here. But look, Paul George is still a 29% usage guy oh, since Westbrook has returned. He's still like a one and a quarter fantasy point per minute guy since Westbrook returned. And he's still the clear number two shoot, scorer on this team. I expect this game also to stay very close. It has a two-point spread in favor of OKC. And while it may not be super fast pace uh, of play, Paul George still remains an option that I like. Although I do think I prefer. I don't Simmons know that there's necessarily a ton of value that's, that's, that that's a, I like. I think there. there are guys in the mid tier like a Kevin Knox at 4,800 who's uh, seen uh, himself inserted into the offensive. Uh, sorry, into the starting lineup has uh, had a pretty big hand in the offense, playing tons of minutes over the past two games, 41 and 33 minutes respectively. As a matchup here with Charlotte defensively. Not necessarily the best matchup for Knox, but at 4,800 seems to have some upside. You have Chetty Osman, you have uh, 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 Alfred Aminu down here at 4,500, maybe more of a power forward uh, talking point. Uh, Tyreek Evans, Jeff Green with Washington, if there continue to be int- uh, injuries there, could have some upside. Seems like there's at least one or two names that are going to intrigue people. Anybody that stands out to you from a value perspective? You know, if Alan Crabb is unable to play, um, Rodi, uh, Rodion's Kuruks, that is his name, Rodion's Kuruks, I, might, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this guy get legitimate run. Uh, he's actually played quite well uh, this season in the 12 games that he's played. You know, he's shooting 49% from the field, three-point shooting, not so much, but uh, he's a hustle guy that, has actually looked decent, this would be a huge risk. But I wouldn't be totally surprised to see him slotted in as a starter. Uh, and if you look at, at that last game, uh, he played just shy of – what did he play? Yeah, just, he played just over 19 minutes. Um, and really this, this could be a spot where I wouldn't expect him to play minutes with Crab on the court. Uh, and he played not many with him on the court last game. I don't know who it would be. Uh, Because the starting lineup last game, you had uh, Russell, Joe Harris, Crab, Allen, and Hollis Jefferson. You know, you could easily like move Harris to the two and put Kuroks at the three. Uh, You could, of course, slot Dinwiddie into the starting lineup, but he's been so good and so potent off the bench that I don't think that would be the wisest decision. Uh, And I think, you know, something like Hollis Jefferson going out would more favorably affect a Carroll or even a Jared Dudley. So I think Kuroks is the guy here who, you know, is the only one that you could see get some minutes uh, at all of those wing positions. And if, if Crab is out, he, by the way, he's 6'9", but he's 2'10". So he's, he's a skinny fella. Keep, keep, keep watch on this. I, I'm curious to see who starts. If it's Dinwiddie, you're going to have a lot of Dinwiddie. If it's Kuroks, I might sprinkle him in a little bit. Uh, because he is <clears throat> basically the bare minimum across the board. It'd be a huge risk. I'd only do it if he gets the start because I'd, I'd put him up around 25 minutes there. And, you know, he's going to shoot, which is cool. You know, as long as he gets some shots up in a really, 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 really good matchup, because uh, the matchup does matter here, then then it's, I don't think it's crazy to play him. But, of course, that's if Butler plays and Furkin Korkmaz is not – uh, on the table, uh, and if these other guys that we think could be out don't play or or do end up playing, but Alan Crab sits because and here's the last thing I'll say: Alan Crab uh, is dealing with that <clears throat> uh, sore right knee, but he's been playing 30 plus minutes basically every night, so that still leaves we, a pretty uh, big hole. We take in our that next step uh, to standpoint. power forward, where you have Giannis, KD, Kawhi, Paul George, all small forward, power forward eligible, and then you you talk about these. Mixed bag of centers and power forward eligible players. So you have the likes of John Collins, Draymond Green, uh, Sabonis, uh, Ibaka is eligible here at 6,300. Uh, Jason Tatum is small forward, power forward eligible. Uh, you do have uh, Al Horford out of the lineup for the Boston Celtics uh, as that continues to be an issue. Siakam is down here at 5,900. I feel like I'm like 
dealing with phlegm whenever I say his name. I feel like it's I'm, it's something it's something coming up. Um, yeah, Hayward, and we go yeah. on from there. Yeah, Listen, the, as I, I have to clear it. my throat, but in the top end, we're dealing with superstars with uh, Giannis, KD, Kawhi, and Paul George. I get it. John Collins being at 7,200 and being uh, as solid as he's been all year has been a surprise to me. I know he's talented. I just haven't seen it coming. And Sabonis here at 6,500 hasn't been great over the past five or even seven games. Uh, had that nice run, but you pointed out, I think on a pod we were on together, about how efficient he had been uh, in that run, where he's playing 26 minutes but shooting 65 to 70%. Mm-hmm. And that was eventually going to come to a halt. Yep. And I think we've seen it. We've seen the price sort of stay elevated. Power forward has been a little bit depleted this year, not a position that's yielded a ton. Some of the names that are on your radar are some of the names that may appear in the deep dive when it is written on Friday. What do you got uh, at Power Forward? All right. Yeah, I'll throw one more value go at, okay, that's small forward and power forward eligible. Uh, Kevin Knox has played 74 minutes over his last uh, two games. I'm mentioning him at power forward because that's where uh, he, he's seeing a lot of his minutes, and he's, he's looked pretty solid. Uh, you're also talking about somebody that over that two game stretch has attempted 40 field goals and 14 three point attempts. So, uh, Kevin Knox, still a pretty decent play here. And it looks like, uh, Fisdale's very, very much willing to give him those minutes. Knox is power forward eligible on FanDuel as well. Uh, not super cheap, but also not overpriced either. I guess we got to talk and I'll start from the bottom here from a point per dollar standpoint. I think we got to talk about Mason Plumley, right? Uh, he played 35 minutes against Memphis. This is an OKC team. I don't know what the starting lineup will look like. Uh, I, I wasn't assuming he would. I didn't think he would start against Memphis, but he did. Um, I, I guess we'll see, Dan. But the kind of the, the interesting thing here is, you know, with Memphis, yes, of course, you have um, you have Marcus Saul, but you also have Jaron Jackson, who is is really good, and he's six eleven, two forty two. Which you know he's a decent sized guy. Oklahoma City at the at the power forward position doesn't have or in the front court doesn't have Jaron Jackson and Marcus Saul. You have Stephen Adams and you have Jeremy Grant, who is a solid defender, good on you know chase down blocks and such. But he's also six nine two twenty. So this isn't a huge front court. You know, outside of Stephen Adams, I could see Lyles back into the <clears throat> excuse me back into the starting lineup here. Uh, and if that happens to be the case, well, uh, I'm playing Lyles over somebody like Plumley. But if Plumley starts, hey, he played 35 minutes there. We really don't know what Mike Malone's going to do. But I'm just happy to go with the starter here. I just just pull the trigger there. He played 35 minutes in that game. Again, bigger front court. We could go back to Lyles. But either one of these guys, and both of them have power forward eligibility, either one of them, depending on who's starting, uh, to me are going to make for very solid plays. Trey Lyle is just shy of a per, of a fantasy point per minute this year. Uh, and Mason Plumley is producing well over a fantasy point per minute. So both of those guys down at the bottom, uh, where I said I would start, Dan, make make for a pretty decent value at this position. Lots of uh, moving parts here. Uh, what do you, is there anybody at the top, or do you feel like this is a position that's been shallow enough and is one where value may present itself that uh, the lower price points may be worthwhile? Yeah, no, I, I think we still have players at the top. We talked Giannis. I mean, always a viable option. Paul George is here as well. Uh, do you want to pay for John Collins? I guess that's one of the questions here. He, the, what I love about Collins here, though, is that he has power forward eligibility. A matchup is definitely not one to get excited over. Uh, I think he's a decent play. He's looked phenomenal lately. I mean, John Collins has looked really good lately. With He has 20-plus points and 10-plus rebounds in four straight games. Uh, and the game prior to that, he had 19 and 11. And then nine points and 10 rebounds the game before so the rebounding and the the scoring totals are through the roof right now he's looking excellent his usage rate uh is is massive um i i don't see how we can't like what we're seeing from john collins the question is uh, let me ask you does this match up because considering how good he's been is this match up enough to get you off of him 
or are you going to ride the wave with with Collins, who is looking? You know, yeah, every I mean, bit I, John as good Collins as is one of those guys who I just have never been a year. huge believer in. Like, not because of anything. It just it hasn't been somebody who's been on my radar. So I honestly will say, I've balked at the price point. I balked at at uh, even when it was in the mid and high sixes. Um, I know he's he's had upside. I know the talent is there. So seventy two hundred makes me uh, take pause. Honestly, for me, with Collins, Collins is probably ownership percentage at this point. Like, what, what, what are we projecting him at? And Osmo does a, a pretty solid, if not great job, of projecting ownership percentages on most nights. Uh, so if, if I'm getting him at lower ownership here against a Celtics team that's depleted in the front court, I might take a stab. But if I'm seeing him double digits or even trending towards being chalk, uh, at 7,200, I'd rather stay away. All right. Um, by the way, and, and I don't, I don't, I don't hate that at all. But he does have a twenty-six percent usage rate uh, over his his last five games, I think. So you're seeing really solid numbers here. Uh, rebounding rate as well uh, is is at twenty-two percent. He's just looking great right now, Dan. But aside from him, you've got Markeith Morris, uh, who makes for a very viable play. Uh, Siakam, if Kawhi Leonard's out, uh, will I go back to the well on Jaron Jackson? I'll definitely sprinkle him in. I won't have a ton. Uh, and that's pretty much the power forward position. I might be missing a couple guys. All right, but let's I'll make close sure to go uh, over the discussion with out with some takes at center uh, where we do have Joel Embiid at 10-6. You have Jokic at 9-4. Lots of talent here. Gasol, Whiteside, Miles Turner is up to 7,400. Enos Cantor gets a matchup with Charlotte at 7,100. Uh, and we make our way to the likes of a Nurkic against Toronto. Uh, Sabonis, who I've already talked about. Uh, we don't have anyone necessarily from uh, – can we – oh, is it a Thomas Bryant sort of night? Oh, boy. Uh, that's going to be fun to discuss. Uh, what do we got here at center? Uh, I say Bryant because he's playing the Nets, and I will play any center against the Nets when I have the opportunity and minutes are there. But uh, what do you got here at center? Who are the names that stand out to you? Yeah, Um I can't believe Rivers just got hit in the head. Crown of the helmet lunged at him. Uh, the defender lunged at him, crown of the helmet. They did not throw the flag with all the ridiculously soft calls that we have seen this season on a second and goal play. And you don't, you don't throw the flag there uh, and, and give him that to me is, is one that, that the officiate. I'm sorry. Officiating has just been so bad this year. I, I had to get it out there, Dan. Uh, it's, it's, Oh my God, it's driving me nuts. It's absolutely terrible. Um, Okay, so and then they get a makeup call right there. Joel Embiid, if Butler's out, you know what to do. I respect Miles Turner's defense, I do, but Joel Embiid is still a phenomenal play here. Uh, Jokic, the one thing with him, you know, looking at Embiid ownership uh, and and a bunch of other things around playing him or potentially fading him. Well, I think Jokic, even though he's facing OKC, is is a perfectly fine play. Mind you, last time he faced them, he played 27 minutes, he got in early foul trouble, and then they blew him out. So uh, Jokic is still a tournament play. He's a guy that you can overlook in a matchup like, or you can overlook the matchup with a player like this because he's so damn good. And I, I'd love to get some Marcus Saul in the lineups, but he's talked about playing uh, injured, and and I'm not exactly sure or, or being hindered by. I can't remember what the what the injury. I can't remember what it was that he said was kind of lingering. Um, but either way, I think it's his knee. We've seen it affect him. I still think he's too cheap here. They're absolutely going to need big minutes from him against uh, Miami's front court, particularly Hassan Whiteside if he gets back to playing 30 minutes. But really, center isn't that deep outside of Embiid and you know Jokic as a tournament play. Like Willie Cauley Stein, if, if you want to consider him, you can, but I like him when he's sub 6K. Uh, Mason Plumley at center. Uh, if you want to play him here, that's perfectly fine. Rondé Hollis Jefferson has center eligibility. Um, and then Dwayne Dedman is still very cheap and always has that 30-minute upside. And when he does play 30 minutes, you're getting good minutes from or you're getting good production. The last guy before we head out, uh, two of them, Jared Allen in a spectacular matchup against, against the Washington Wizards. Uh, he has seen his minutes fluctuate as well, but he still has been very solid this season and is producing north of a fantasy point per minute. And the last one, he did me well the other day. Uh, I knew that he was going to see a lot of minutes with Sarich on the court when he faced Minnesota. Marvin Bagley, uh, the only thing I don't like is his salary has come up, which bothers me. So, you know what, now, the more I think about it, uh, first of all, I know that Bagley is, is 
power forward uh, on FanDuel. But on DraftKings, I was thinking maybe he'd be a better play than Jared Allen. I don't think he is. I, I am. I muted myself because I was coughing cur- uh, curiously on this side. Um, the cold that won't ah, leave sorry. my house. Uh, Jared Allen is one of my favorite players to track in the NBA, and this has nothing to do with uh, – and listen, I, I love that he's upped his skill in blo- uh, blocking shots and, and uh, offensively, but he's big into STEM and has been uh, – doing a lot in Brooklyn of taking uh, local elementary schools on food shopping trips, giving them X amount of dollars and saying, Hey, go forward and stay within your budget. If you stay within your budget, I'll buy your groceries. If you don't, you buy them yourselves. And obviously he's covering everything. Like it's not like he's actually making a kid buy if he goes over, but it's a great story to read. It was in the, the yeah. post or right, the news. Right, right. One, one of the, the tabloids quote unquote, uh, in New York, a story about him. So I've, I'm a big fan of his, uh, also like him from a DFS perspective on this slate. Uh, the, the Wizards don't have much in the front court. Uh, so uh, I think that's going to be a, a running theme as, as I talk about playing against the Nets as well. I do want to get overall, as you look through this slate, anything stand out, any games that you like more than others or anything that uh, you want to point out before we close out by talking about your top uh, five figure play of uh, the slate. Yeah, just in, in terms of games that, that I like, there, there isn't a game like OKC uh, New Orleans like we had last or on Wednesday last time we did this show. But I think just individually, there are some really good spots. My favorite game on this slate, though, right now is Brooklyn, Washington. God, especially if you get, I know it sounds crazy, but uh, Alan Crabb out, that's going to free up uh, a, quite a bit of minutes. And you could see Dinwiddie inheriting some of them and playing like 35 minutes, which would be huge. And, and I would play him in a lot of places. Uh, but that game on both sides is very appealing. And I think that would be our top game right now. I'm also, I think, low-key, I like this Charlotte Knicks, Charlotte and Knicks game. But uh, I don't see myself loading up there. I just think it's one that... It could be, be well, uh, I do want to get your take here again. This uh, is indicative of very little, but I do like get, getting the sense from Dave where he looks here at the top end if you're trying to find a, a stud to get into the lineup. Giannis, Russ, Joel, KD, Steph Curry, all above 10K. Uh, Wall, Jokic, and Leonard uh, are on the outside looking in here. But between Giannis, Russ, uh, Joel, and Bede, KD and Steph Curry, all above 10K on DraftKings. Who would you start your lineup construction around on Friday slate? You know what, Dan? I well, caveat: if Jimmy Butler's out, we uh, we're definitely Joel Embiid going heavy on him. But if if Butler plays, I think you got. I think I'm going back to the well with with. With uh, at Russell Westbrook, I think I got to go back to the well with Russell Westbrook. You know, he's burned me twice. So, uh, with how good he is, if you if I jump off now, let's you know exactly close it out right there. You find Dave on Twitter at Lofty underscore D, L O U G H Y underscore D. Find him on uh, Sirius XM, Sirius 210, XM 87, 5 to 7 on Saturdays, 7 to 9 on Sundays through the NFL season. Uh, find me Saturday mornings on FNTSY 8 to 10 talking NFL, also on Twitter at Dan Strafford. And don't forget, uh, here on YouTube or here on iTunes or wherever you listen, uh, leave a comment, uh, leave a rating, leave a subscription. So you want to subscribe to this podcast, let us know you're listening, leave a comment, and you'll be entered to win one month of free content, a specific sport from Osmo.com, and you'll also be entered in to win a potential year-long all-inclusive membership, uh, which will be drawn on Christmas Eve, also known as December 20. Uh, with that said, wish you the best of luck in all your contests on Friday night. You get Adam and Emac on Saturday, and then uh, you can find uh, Dave and I on the variety of fantasy radio that is out in the world on Saturday. So uh, wish you the best of luck. We'll be back here with more on the DFS Early Bird.